I sometimes shed tears over wildfire footage. Yes, I really do. I love trees. They're so down to earth. So imagine how I felt when I learned that some ecologists and environmentalists claim that suppressing wildfires will just make future wildfires worse. Basically, they're saying, let it burn. Let's have a look. One of my most memorable experiences is visiting the Sequoia National Park in California. The giant trees which grow there can get up to 90 meters tall and live up to 2000 years. Interestingly enough, the cones of these giant trees are actually quite small and they'll only open and release their seeds in the heat of fires. That's right, wildfires aren't just an end for vegetation. They're also a new beginning. And this is why scientists and conservation groups have gotten into an heated argument about what to do with the giant trees as climate change changes their environment. Climate change has already shifted precipitation patterns globally, has likely contributed to making wildfires larger and more severe, and that trend will continue. But what are we to do about it? Do we need to help the trees? Or does nature know best? In the past years, California has seen a lot of wildfires of enormous size. These fires have killed about a fifth of the giant trees already. I want to cry just reading this, but let's keep in mind that the baby trees get born in the fire. And indeed, after the fires, new seedlings began to sprout in many of the burned areas, but not in others. The smaller numbers of seedlings concerned some scientists. It concerned them so much that the National Park Service broke its unwritten non-interference rule and began replanting some severely burned areas. Some scientists and an environmentalists strongly object to this. They say that the number of new seedlings is typical for the area and humans should not interfere. They actually launched a lawsuit against the National Park Service. Meanwhile, the Park Service continues planting new trees. Another group that calls itself Propagation Nation is meanwhile saying that the problem is actually worse than just wildfires because as climate change progresses, the California climate will become increasingly stressful for the giant trees. They advocate what they call assisted migration. That is, they want to plant and settle giant trees in the northwest in the area around Seattle. I'm totally in favor of that group if only because people might finally understand what physicists mean by propagator. In any case, you see that the question whether nature needs our help is extremely difficult to answer. Climate change is natural, but the speed at which we're currently changing the climate is unprecedented. We don't know which species will be able to adapt and be fine and which not. It's even more unclear what, if anything, we should do about it or whether we'll just make things work. I mean, it's not like humans have such a great track record for doing the right thing at the right time, do we? And into all this mess now drops a new paper from researchers at the University of Montana. They ran a lot of computer simulations about how wildfires develop and recur. They did this for forests in North America over a period of 240 years. They find that trying to suppress wildfires will, in the long run, just make things worse. I thought they sound weird at first, but on second thought, it does make sense. First of all, they find not so surprisingly that more dry spells caused by climate change will generally increase the frequency and severity of wildfires. But then they point out that the higher the intensity of the fire, the less we can do about it. So the fires that we can extinguish are usually those of low and moderate intensity. And if we suppress these low intensity fires, this leads to a buildup of potential fuel for future fires, which will be more intense. As a consequence of this fuel buildup, they say, suppressing wildfires eventually leads to more burned area rather than less. They also say that since we can only suppress wildfires which have a low intensity, this shifts the wildfire intensity towards more extremes, not just because of climate change, but because we're extinguishing the fires of lower intensity. Let me be clear though, it's not like they're saying climate change is isn't part of the problem or that we shouldn't do anything about wildfires. They say instead that the best course of action would be to let low intensity fires do their thing so long as they don't endanger people. But what about the bunnies? Hasn't anyone thought of the bunnies? The poor little innocent bunnies? Okay, I admit that I don't like it. 
But hey, science has spoken more seriously. You know how sometimes you get ill and have to take some medication and your doctor will then prescribe medications for the side effects of the medications and the side effects of those and so on. That's how I feel about our attempt to save the trees. Let's just hope that the patient stabilizes. That destruction is part of nature and can even benefit nature is of course not entirely new. Indeed, the nature preservation group Planet Wild has recently gone on a mission to do exactly that. They kill trees in the Scottish Highlands. But what might look destructive and wrong at first sight is actually an efficient way to bring back the natural biodiversity of the forest. Unfortunately, humans have turned much of the Scottish Highlands into monocultures harvested only for timber, leaving little space or light for local wildlife. This is why Planet Wild went there to help and tear down trees and bring back the lively ecosystems these forests once were. And this is just one of many of Planet Wild's missions. They've cleared waters, fought wildfires, repopulated forests with species that had almost disappeared. And I can't wait to see what they're up to next. Planet Wild funds their missions from community contributions. I joined them last year and I've been really impressed by their work. It's making a real difference, one mission at a time, and you get to see the program with your own eyes on their app or their YouTube channel. If you already joined them, and I know many of you have, thank you so much. If you haven't, go and check them out. You can help Planet Wild help nature for as little as $6 a month. If you're among the first 200 people signing up with our code, which you also find in the info below, I'll cover the first month. And don't worry that you'll get stuck with them. You can cancel your membership each month. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.